Tell him he's all that. Turn to somebody, tell him he's all that. And we have shared some of the names of God so far. Elohim, El Shaddai. And this morning we're going to continue looking at the names of God. And we'll focus our attention on Genesis chapter 22, verse number 14. Let me also uh, welcome again uh, the brother and sister Sweeney from the Bahamas. They're still with us here. We praise God for their presence here at church this morning. Maybe they're celebrating the graduation of their daughter. We're just happy to have you guys back with us worshiping this morning. We're going to prepare our hearts and pray for the Word of God, that God will bless us. But we also want to lift up Mother Midas this morning. Amen. She uh, had a fall and is in the hospital uh, this morning. I stopped by on my way to the office this morning. And, uh, she's at, the, at that time having some tests done uh, to see if she may have had a minor uh, stroke. But we, I want to pray for her this morning and believe God to touch her body. Amen. You know our God is able this morning. Amen. So as we prepare our hearts to pray for the Word of God, we're also going to pray and lift her up this morning, as well as those who are shut in this morning, believing God to move, to touch, and to bring healing to their bodies. Our text this morning is Genesis 22, verse number 14. And Abraham called the name of that place, Jehovah Jireh. All right. Jehovah Jireh. As it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord, it shall be seen. Amen. Would you take somebody by the hand where you are right now and just touch a degree and let's believe God. Amen. As we pray together. Amen. Father, thank you that you are God that hears us. We thank you that your ears are not heavy, that you cannot hear us. Neither your arm too short, that you cannot say. We thank you that we have access to your throne through the name that is above every name, the name of Jesus. So Father, we come before you in that name. That name that has power to deliver, that power has power to heal. And we lift up Mother Myers to you right now, Father. Touch your servant. Bring healing to her body. Restore health and wholeness to her even right now in the name of Jesus. We pray that you would touch her from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. And that you would raise her up in your name. Touch Deacon Myers, dear Father, and her daughter right now, Father. And that you would be with them in a special way. Give them your peace that passes all understanding. And let them know you are standing beside them. That your name is Emmanuel, God with us. Father, touch Sister Lucille this morning. Breathe on her. Touch her from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. All who are sick and afflicted, even the sound of my voice, somebody press their way out to the house of God right now. Not feeling well in their body. And I pray that you would be the provider of their healing even right now, God. We thank you for what you're going to do. We bind the plan of the devil right now and declare healing, breakthroughs, and deliverance in this place. That you would get all glory, honor, and praise. And God, what is done, I'll bow before you and give you the glory. For we ask it all in the name that is above every name, the name of Jesus. And we thank you for victory in Jesus' name. And the people of God said... Amen and amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. He's speaking to you this morning on the subject Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who provides. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who provides. In 1943, Abraham Maslow, who is called the father of modern management psychology, introduced to the world what he calls the theory of motivation. And the basis of his theory is that we as human beings are motivated by a 
unsatisfied needs. And that certain lower or basic needs need to be satisfied before higher needs can be addressed. In other words, people are motivated to fulfill fundamental needs before moving on to more advanced ones. According to Abraham Maslow, a person has to have a sense of security first for their body. That is, they must have food, water, etc. They must have property that is a roof over their head. They need to experience love and a sense of belonging, which is acceptance and esteem. And he says that we must possess the resources which are the most basic of human needs. Ian e. Walker put it like this. He said that we all need some food, some sun, some work, some fun, and some what? <laughs> so he says that it is only when people have a good sense of safety, security, and self-esteem that then they will be motivated to pursue other goals. And he calls these needs deficiency needs, which he says has to be fulfilled before a person is able to act unselfishly. He even asserts that if we prevent a person from having these needs satisfied, that that person uh, will become ill or even have a tendency to act in evil ways. So what he is saying is that we must have our basic needs and before we can move forward toward reaching our fullest potential, that those basic needs must be met. So we cannot expect to perform at our highest level when our stomachs are empty. We cannot expect to pass an exam when we are worried about having a roof over our head. We cannot expect to love and care for other people when we do not love and care for ourselves. We cannot feel at home in a community with people who eye us suspiciously or alienate us or never accept us for who we are. And if we do not have these needs met, then we will never go forward and accomplish what we were made to accomplish. Then he even goes further than that. Because Maxwell tells us that if these needs are not met, then we'll also begin to engage in evil behavior. I got news for you this morning. That person who is stealing out there is not just stealing, amen, because they think it is fun. But oftentimes they find themselves stealing because they're trying to meet a need in their life. Some people drink and they do drugs or sleep around, not just because they are bad people, but no, sometimes they're trying to fulfill some time, some kind of unmet need in their need in their life. There are people who are mean and obnoxious. Not because they hate you, but really they're mean and obnoxious because they hate the person that they look at in the mirror every day. Yes. So while we sit back and judge others, we need to be thankful to God that God has, has stretched forth his hand and ministered to the needs in our lives. Otherwise, we'd be just like some of the very people. 